so here are our center positions. And say we run k mean for two, four, six, or eight clusters. So this is just stating again what I already pointed out. Um, what our artificial clusters are. And I point out you get different answers each time. You can fix the seeds if you want to get reproducible answers. Um, because you, you can even, if you have random starting points and random data, both are different each time. But if you fix the seeds for both all of those, you will get the same answer each time. And as I pointed out, we're going to change that 20 to 1 to produce more amusing results. And so here we have the first example. These are the um, small clusters. They're quite compact, very obvious. There's no um, um, no question about which point runs to which cluster. And this particular run was for two clusters. Remember, there are four total. So what it's done is taken of the four clusters is taken these two and made them one cluster. That's why they're colored blue with the center here. Notice the center is nowhere near any of the points. Uh, same as the other two were formed another cluster and the center is here. And it's outputted the value of the distortion, which is the mean value of the distance between the points and the centers. And this one was run with 20 iterations. And uh, the max mean of one means that the uh, Test on on quality was done on the average value of the distortion, and all the uh, results in this in this particular lesson will have the parallelism parameter set to one. If you look at this graph title, I've just gone through it in, in, in what it has. It has the number of clusters running from two to eight. It has the parallelism. It has this max mean value, which is in more detail. Um, judging by the mean distortion for one and the maximum distortion of two, there is a number of independent iterations, number of different center starting positions used. And we minimize the distorting, distortion measure um, as we run over these iterations controlled by max mean. Um, so this here is the actual core we use. And this is the version I wrote, which has max mean as an argument and parallelism as an argument. As I say, parallelism is one for this set of runs. Max mean, we sometimes look at one or two, uh, usually one. And uh, we just add those two parameters to the basic k-means, which is given by Python. And so we, so we can go through these parameters that what you'd expect. That the points to be clustered, the number of clusters, the value of k we want to find, the number of iterations, which I said ran from 1 to 20. Within each iteration, we actually have to converge. So remember, we have two convergences. The outer loop over uh, center positions, we converge on the on the, uh, just the goodness of the quality of fit controlled by max mean. Within a given choice of centers, we're looking for a local minima. So we don't have to worry too much about the criteria, because uh, uh, as it's a local minimum, it's probably pretty robust uh, to small changes. And so the, th the value of thresh, which is uh, I think 10 to the minus 5, uh, is you stop when the distortion, the change in the distortion is less than the, this value of thresh. So this controls in within each center iteration how many times you iterate k-means. And parallelism, as I mentioned, is always one for this lecture. And max mean is usually one, that's the usual Python k-means. And two is an alternative quality measure we'll discuss later on. We will point out there's some cases where testing on the maximum is better than testing, probably better than testing on the, on the mean distortion. So here's another example. Uh, this has iteration of 20. Uh, this has the large clusters, not the um, Small clusters, the scales here are different because these points are more spread. So to put, keep them in the plot, we have to run this scale to five. Uh, again, we have two here clustered together with a center here. These two here are clustered together with a center here. 
Note, as I pointed out, the clusters at the top are somewhat larger than the clusters at the bottom. That's just the input radii of the clusters. So there's nothing deep about that. That's just what I put in when I generated these clusters. And remember, these particular points differ from run to run because these are randomly generated with this Gaussian distribution. Here's uh, another example here. Actually, we get a uh, point, which is, remember this points out that this actually does vary from iteration to iteration. This point here is actually at above six, and so we have an even lot, whereas the previous example was um, was smaller. In fact, this is the very large clustering. Um, the previous case was large, and this is a larger radius by 50%, so it's not surprising, it extends much further. And these now clusters have sort of joined here, actually. The, these uh, two ones are centered at x equals naught and y equals naught and y equals three. And here we have a center, which looks a pretty good center here, and a pretty good center here. Uh, and this is probably roughly the best type of clustering you could do. But if you did want to do two clusters for this particular sample. Um, here's another example of um, four clusters with the small clustering, so very compact clusters. Clearly it finds what you would hope it would find, that each of those individual compact clusters, which I made as separate clusters, has turned out to be separate. Um, all of these things have 20 iterations. Here we have the k equals four for large clustering, and um, it looks pretty nice. Here we have the very large clustering, k equals four, it's gone well. Our gain is spread out with a point at near above six. Now we do something which uh, who knows what it's meant to do, because we're asking for six clusters with a sample which only has four. So in this particular example here, which is the large case with k equals six, it's actually done something which is probably what you might have expected to do if it was gonna get the right answer. It's kept the two smaller clusters at the bottom as one cluster, and it's chopped the two clusters at the top, each into two separate clusters. So remember we pointed out that um, clustering is sometimes used to find um, separated entities, and for here, you can find some algorithms to tell you that k equals four was the best choice to make, because uh, as soon as you get to k equals six, you are getting geometrically compact regions. These are more compact than the original case with k equals four, but they are not clearly separated. And there are gonna be variants of these clusters which rotate this, this dividing line through the original cluster. Um, here is large clustering, and here it's actually done something really rather different, showing how um, in this I deliberately ran with one iteration, so I could get funny answers. And you can see it's got some sort of interesting result. It's taken this medium-sized cluster here and chopped it into three. And these big clusters are chopped into, uh, these are assigned to proper clusters. So it's got three good clusters. The thing which is one cluster has been chopped into three. It is doubtful that this is the optimal solution for this case. And if I'd run with iterations of 20, I would have got a different solution. Now we have k equals eight, even more extreme case. And here we did 20 iterations. Uh, this compact cluster here is just one. This medium-sized one here is two. This medium-sized one is three. I think this is the largest one. It is, it is also three. So we have three, two, two, one is how we do the k equals eight for the large clusters. Here is uh, another case. Uh, one, three, he's taken the actual smallest cluster. And here, although this case here, the um, it's actually joined in some points here, which I'm not quite certain where they come from this bigger cluster, but these two probably come from that big cluster. But for this solution, they're nearest this center here. And uh, so here's an example of 
one, I mean, I'm running iteration of one here to get sort of interesting local minima, which are not necessarily global minima in terms of minimizing the average distortion. And here's an interesting case which we'll discuss a little more for, um, which sort of intrigued me. So we have actually these small clusters. We have actually 20 iterations, so it's actually, you know, you just want to get a good answer. And we expected the, um, if we clustered the four small clusters into two, we would do two and two. Then we, then we would get a solution like those two were a cluster, these two were a cluster, or these two were a cluster, and those two were a cluster. But actually what it's done is made these three one cluster, and this uh, single cluster one cluster. So it's done a very different solution. And we'll have a few more, we'll have a slide or two on that later on. And this is actually the, this is actually iteration of another iteration of 20. I think the previous one was also here. So these are both iterations of 20. And this is showing for the 20, actually this is a good solution. Because it ran through a lot of possibilities. And it's the symmetry related version, rather than um, doing these three is one, it's done. The, the next plot has got these three as one. So for any of these types of solution, if you write down one of them, you can always rotate them with the symmetry of the problem and get related ones. With exactly which solution you get, you can never, it's not so obvious. And so this is uh, what you'd expect to actually have got. This is a coming back, this is again, k equals to 20 iterations. In this case here, it's got the two and two. The net, what you would, I guess I would have expected to be the natural solution. 